folks, welcome to uh, Two Pugscast. Once again, I'm Ray Roach and this is Jim Lavery. Um, we're going to, this week we're going to talk about um, Wolf, our first full colour book that we're actually in the process at the moment of creating. Um, Jim, how do you feel about it? Excited? I'm really excited. I'm really excited. We should, do you know what? We should call this podcast Two Pugs Have a Fight. We should t- talk about how we had, we had a, um, uh, uh, what, what would you say? I don't know. What would you say? Um, because actually, I was thinking about it a lot. And I was thinking about, do you know how one of the things I think I mentioned in one of the earlier podcasts, and I think I've, or I've talked to you about it, how it really bothers me about, artistic the artistic um temperament that people have uh, artists have a bad reputation about being flaky and everything and um but i had that moment i had one of those things that happened to me and it happened at the beginning of this project that ryan rice talked about wolf and it came from a place of real excitement and i can really talk about it but ray had to give me the ice bucket challenge <laughs> 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 and I really needed it, and then, and that's the kind of um, the collaborative relationship um, is what happened. Um, Wolf is awesome. I'm really, really, really enjoying it. And why I'm enjoying it, and one of the reason that or the theme of the podcast tonight is color, because as Ray said, it's our first color book, and um, it's just it's like having I, I don't know it's like having a um, a different range of your voice you know you've been kind of having your or another instrument or something or big orchestra or something like that it's really terrific i don't know how successful i'm being I, I've, I've been kind of I, I i went too far at one stage and i reined it right back right back and i think so far anyway i think what are we up to page nine eight nine nine mm-hmm. i think yeah um and so far, so good. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're talking about colour um, tonight and Wolf in this project's terrific. How do you feel apart from the hiccup at the, <laughs> hiccup at the start? <laughs> the, the very first page you sent had energy. It had pizzazz. It was almost, if we weren't doing this story, you know, and mm-hmm. we didn't have to hit certain beats and things, we could have hit the ground with that page would be perfect but there are certain things that you have to show on a page that's when mm. the script is so important you know and yeah. there, there are beats and there are lead-ins and things and yeah you have to show things in a certain order and i loved where we're not using it but that you did a page with a dead sheep at the top of it you added in mm. a panel and it just freaked me out you know it was oh jesus this is them like yeah a yeah. Sam Raimi movie, you know, it's whoa. Uh, but that, that energy that you, you hit a page with was just so exciting. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. When you're doing this long enough, it becomes, yeah, draw this, draw a horse, draw a vampire, draw this, draw that. And it's hard to get that, to get the, to rev up the, the motor. Mm. That first page you did, it was, wow, you know, Jim just took off, you know. And yeah. Wins, you know. Um, and we kept like 80, 85% of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, they do pages and then throw the whole thing away. You know? Yeah. And we, we have a system where we start off slow, we do our first few pages, and then we came momentum when we set the yeah. tone. And yeah. in this case, it's no different. The yeah. added problem, the complexity was the color. Mm-hmm. Color isn't just grass is green, the sky is blue, you know, mm. and the color of the sky, the, the building, where it is, it all becomes part. If you don't do it right, it ends up being a picturesque thing, you know, or mm-hmm. like you see a haunted house, it's, it's always like lightning crackling, you know, or dark clouds yeah. in the background, you know, it's never bright and breezy yeah. when they walk up to the door. The color is so important to set in the mood. And what we have now, we went backwards and forwards, but we have yep. this, we have bright color for the everyday stuff and then the parts the locations that have a certain sort of sensitivity um, the color reflects the relationship that 
the main characters are having with each other. Because yeah. the main character is a policeman out in Galway, and there's three women in his life. And as the book goes on, we see that there's a different color palette when he's interacting with each of those women. You know? um, yeah. The reader will know what, where they are, where they stand in this relationship. Because it is a menage a trois, or whatever it would be with three women, I don't know. But um, yeah, getting that color right at the start, you know, and tone it back slightly, you know. Yes. Um, the exuberance, though, is wonderful. You know, that's what I get when I sit down. I have an idea for a story. I sit down. My first draft is like that. I vomit. They call it the vomit script because you just vomit onto yeah. the page. And that's what you did with the color. You threw color at it, name it. Hmm. We pull it back a bit. Yeah, that, that page was so important to put it down because you can move from that. If you'd done yeah. 10 p- pages like that, it would have been like a child's comic where all you need is color on every page. You yeah. know, for us now, the color is going to be like people always say, and you hear it used a lot color evokes the emotion of the page. Mm. And in this case, you're really going to see it. Yeah, it's a fantastic job. It. Like, it's, it's amazing, you know. Uh, so it's worth it yeah it's a week or two weeks you know i think that that's can be that's a really good piece of kind of info for people who are collaborating you know watching and collect and it's happened to them and i always um i whenever i take on a project or a script and everything um it's that i treat it really as a client you know the the person I'm doing the work for is a client, and I take it really seriously, and I treat it like a job. And I think that's the really that's the most important thing is to treat it like a job. You know, because it's all right being you know, and artists have this reputation of being kind of flighty and unreliable and flaky at the same time and emotional and all of that. And all those things are terrific. There's no need to. And if you can indulge yourself. You know, it's your book. Go for it. Um, and what happened? Not only, and I had to apologize, and I felt terrible for it. But the only thing I can explain it is that I was having all those moments. I was having like I just saw this opportunity, and I was even adding text. Do you remember I'd written yeah. on it like a like a wee fairy tale introduction? It was a nice idea, but it, yeah, it didn't fit unfortunately. No, like, no, then, people were you, you right because I played around a movie. Some people yeah. like the voiceover version. Other people like just the yeah. performances. Yeah. And what, what I was what what had happened was and Ray was really right. Um I think I might have terrified you or frightened you or something, but I'd forgotten the script. <laughs> I'd let go of it to, yeah. completely. i vom- as you say, I vomited up so much on the thing. You were like, what is this? Because I got I got muddled in the, there's a there's a scene very early in the first few pages uh, that takes place in a pub, and you'd really described it really clearly in a pub, but somewhere along I'd also got a description of a cottage, and I don't know where the two things in my brain got muddled up, and I was being really loose as well, and I was trying to real watercolory thing because God was so beautiful, um, and I'd thought well there's this you know this landscape you want to make the most of it now and i tried a real watercolor for the landscape but you said it's too bright and everything and whenever you did that whenever you said that it, it was like a oh, jim back, uh, back into the room and the script do you remember the script yeah. <laughs> i'd forgotten it i'd completely forgotten it and i was just having a blast i was having a real wheel of a time um that i just I went too far. Went way, way, way. Maybe I didn't explain this clearly enough, or, or kind of. There's a thing where, um, and this is a, this is another important issue. If you are collaborating, and if you do take it seriously like a job, and if your client calls you up and said, "Here's a list of changes." can't be precious about it this is my artistic vision and you know the client has asked for x y and z and you give and that happens to me all and i'm not precious about that at all because whether it's you know a graphic design job i'm working on a book or something like that or you know the the client or 
um, I did storyboards one time for advertising. I was doing that for a while. I was enjoying it and that was good fun. But the client just says, we need this and this and this and this. And I'm never precious about it. And I think in my brain, um, I was sending you these pages and sort of expecting you to come back and go, um, okay, well, you know, because I'd done panels. I put in panels that you didn't ask for. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there was an eyeball and a sheep and oh, was great. that yeah. and the other, you know. Yeah. Love and it. in my brain, I was going, this will be okay. Ray will look at this and he'll go, oh, this is good. This isn't maybe working so much. We'll chop and change and we'll arrive at the at the best version of it. Um, so that went too far. And and also it completely ignored the script. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing about it is, we, we, we do this, okay, we want to make some money out of it to make more. You know, and well, yeah. I also want to have fun and enjoy it. And the pages I got, the first couple of pages I got were, ah, you know, if we didn't have the script, you know, yes. I hadn't, I, it was a much bigger script to start off with and I had to pair yeah. it down. If I did, if I wasn't restricted to those pages, mm. we could have been flamboyant and then put the elements in later on, you know, mm. hit the ground running and then build the thing after. We, we only have 4K pages. And there's yeah. so much to happen later on that it yeah. just had to be a certain way. Um, yeah. Other than that, I could have done what's called a cold opening, you know, which is something that happens at the start that has nothing got to do with much else, but it shows yeah. the reader, oh, stuff is coming. This guy's getting disemboweled, blah, blah, blah. You know? Yeah. It's class. It's just like it opens and bosh, you're in. You're in and it's off to go. And then, you know, it slows off a little bit. But right from the first page, you're just walloped straight in. As we're chatting, Ryan, I'm going to colour these. I'm just yeah, going to um, yeah. just to talk about a wee bit Do you about colour. Color. The computer. Um, I I have been doing um, uh, for this project, and uh, I I think I will always because it's just so much easier. It's so much easier, um, and speed and. Um, is just the most important thing. You just, you know, you've got to, to do it. And it's terrific. It's good fun as well. But the most important thing is getting those pages sent around. I, I have in my mind a set amount of pages that I want to do per day, uh, at least one page per day. And uh, uh, you can only do that with um, with uh, uh, digital. Yeah, it's, it's just it's the way it is. Um, well, so what I think you did was you put that um, blood splatter on the first page that bled off the bottom. Yes, I love that, put that, so back much in. that I yeah. put that in on your page. I hope you don't mind. I took it from. I your don't mind at all. Yeah. And I put it on okay. the finished page, and it just, right. it just. I can put it back. Yeah, I put it back. I put it in myself. You put it, in. Put it in. Put it. But I'd always ask you for it or something like that, like you know. No, but, I, I don't mind it at all. It's... Touches like that. You know that make it yeah off the page you know um, yeah but the the color is just so much more technical now it's i i don't yeah. know how people are freehand and they just do what they want you know it, it it's it adds just so much more much more think about every every page you know yeah but the color highlights something that you don't want highlighted you know <laughs> yeah um, but it is it's, it's amazing you know i'm seeing it in color <laughs> We sort of look at the pages and we go here we go wow you know if that was black and white you'd be pointing at the reader's eye at something but the color sort of hits you and then you go oh yeah, yeah. look at that yeah um especially the, the crime scene you know <laughs> it takes a second before you see the guy on the ground <laughs> you yeah know? yeah i'm not looking at oh and then he's just <laughs> down on the ground I mean, yeah. in white, you'd have to really make an issue that he's there to point the reader at it, you know. Yeah. Color, just, it does so many different things, you know, yeah. not just colour. It's it's signposting. Yeah. I find it amazing now. I get the script and I look at it and I go, yeah. 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 The black and white, sometimes you can just forget something's in the script because it wasn't that important. Mm. But the colour, yeah. if they're doing something in the script, you kind of have to see it because the color shows up everything. Yeah. Not, not as forgiving, you know. I don't really yeah. 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 No, I do. And, and there's kind of, and with your script, there's always, 
And I've noticed this as well. There's that kind of wide establishing shot into intimate. Yes. Yeah. And you know, yeah. so it's everything's not immediately, which really forces you, the reader, to to read, to look and to really absorb it, to kind because of, you won't get it first pass. You'll have to come in, and then you you're guiding them through and say, "Look at this. This is the object of." And there's only come. I, I was thinking about this the other day, actually, where I was thinking about. I can only think of one or two splash pages, which uh, that we've done in our books, and um, which means it's really impactful. There's one in particular that one of the first pages I ever did for you, where the splash page. That was a. I only. That was, um, I we have people home, visitors from Finland. And uh, they were looking at the books, and the guy, he, it really sold him. He turned the page, he said, oh, look, that's Bullbeg. Turned the page, and went, oh, can I have this? <laughs> so I gave him the first two wishes of it, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's one of those things where people look, and they look twice at it, and they go, oh. You know, and it's a selling point at the tables. You know, I opened the book. Really? Yeah, I say, I always look at the second page of our books, and people look at you, and go, what are you talking about? And sure enough, they turn over the book, and it's, oh. Yeah, it is. It's a marvelous image, Jim. You know. Yeah. Well, I remember reading it in the script and going, I remember about a second going, oh, how am I going to do this? I mean, because you've got to think. Uh, for should we spoiler alert? Yeah, sure. Hang on. It's you, there, yeah, yeah. So, I, um, so this is uh, that was the first book I did with you. Is that right? What is? Oh. Was it the? First? I can't remember. It was no. Hang on, maybe which, which, was, no. which was? Which was? Yeah, I want my copy. Um, I'll just describe it. I thought I have my copy here somewhere, just next to me, and hands reach it's not. Uh, anyway, it was a it was a swastika made up of human body parts. <laughs> I remember going. Uh, all right, okay. Uh. Point number two for all you know, the aspiring uh, uh, comic artists or anybody who wants to, you know, collaboration and the client will come along and say, you know, nudity is that something that bothers you? Politics is that something that bothers you? You know, you've got to, these are questions you've got to, um, and whereas um, I would never work for. Uh, right wing or Nazi or any I would never you know like propaganda or anything like that in any one way. These things come up in stories, you know, uh, if it's Indiana Jones punching a Nazi or exactly. um you know these things come it's part that's that's storytelling, that's the way it is. And um you've got to be you've got to set your kind of like I I can never I can never draw a mouse. I don't think I because I could it's so yeah yeah. Visceral, it's so emotional. It's amazing. It's the most amazing book. Um, but I can draw it. I'd just be so, you know, just emotional about it, you know. Um, I'm gonna talk about then there's two approaches I have to color. One is, you know, the color, you have the color, the sky is blue, grass is green, cars red, ladies are that color, and the guys, you know, that color. And then and it is, and that's what I did at the first pass at Wolf was it was a scenery it was Galway scenery you come along and you do the flowers and the mountains and the road and everything and then you add either highlights or you come along with the shadows and you add in you know shadows and highlights and all of that and that is kind of fine I think it's you know it looks like what it is it's you know shadows and highlights and colors and that's fine i think that works well in fact a couple of pages in the updated version i think they whenever we went from the initial scene to the next scene which is sort of normal day um it's not as bright as it was but it's normal daytime colors and that's the kind of approach i was using it's you know the 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 skies the skies well it's gray it's ireland so the sky's usually gray uh, but you know skin tones and so on and so on but for the next set of pages it was different and my approach was more mood so what I did was you know uh, really garish almost colors um, to give a sense of 
I don't know, the sinister maybe. Yeah. You know, and we'll actually put that page up. Yeah. The editing. Oh, yeah. And sorry, well, you know, there... that guys, and uh, it's so evocative. Um, yeah. There's a, a great panel with a guy. He's a like a, a street a sons of anarchy type guy. You know, motorcycle guy. He's leaning out of a SUV window, right? And this guy just looks dangerous, you know. And there's a couple of other similar fellas, and the guy smoked a cigar, and you just know, don't mess with these guys. And you wonder yeah. the people who are getting off the boat, they realised, you know, how dangerous these fellas are. Yeah. And it, that's it's just the look of it at twilight. It's just it's sinister. It's yeah, it's very good. Yeah. It's that yeah, and that that was the kind of using light as a kind of um metaphor or something so these guys there's two worlds or they're in between worlds these yep. characters oh, are coming in yeah. and they're coming in and they're kind of half in half out and i thought twilight and there's kind of and that i, I remember um it could be morning could be night it's still got that mm. odd color in and then the scene immediately after that we're inside a house again, but you were describing a cellar and you you know scratched up and dirty and everything. So that one was sort of halfway between because the skin tone and those characters in that scene isn't natural. They're not fleshy colored, you know, human. They're kind of it's monkey. It's sort of again using color as a texture. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah, yeah. And then we go to another scene. So we might have, and by the time we finish this book or come to the, uh, there'll be a load of polishing because we talked about this before as well, that we really need polish and I need to kind of uh, smack in the wrists and go over. Again, I have no issue with that at all. I want to do that. And there's loads of stuff just because I want to hit that page, one page per day target, you know, but I'd rather get the page out now and go back and polish it at the end. But anyway, um, what I'm afraid of is I'm doing this all the time. You know, uh, every time we change a scene, then we're getting these change of colors, and only if it's appropriate to the scene. But I want to make sure that it's appropriate, like you know, it fits the story because the most important thing it fits the story. And what it reminded me of was Watchmen and how ugly the pa palette is in Watchmen. How you know the colors of Watchmen at times mostly this really ugly palette, but the book itself is really. Although it's grim. <laughs> well, page nine reminds me of those early Ed Brubaker stories, you know, criminal and things like that, where you had those blue and greens and, and weird colours, you know, and uh, very few straight lines, you know. Yeah. Uh, like this world isn't organised, it's not straight, it's, it's dark, it's murky. It's not Sin City though, you know, there's no, colour in it, there's no. emotion in it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, page nine especially. It's a feeling that if you ever look at old, um, like you know, Ed Brubaker, um, yes, yeah, and his older, older stuff, and uh, before he became like pulp, um, yeah, his stuff is, is it looks very like that, not, not the same in any way, shape, or form, but the way they use those almost color down the middle of someone with their blue on one side, green on the other, like the sickly yeah. kind of feeling, you know, yeah, page nine, those colors. They sort of make me feel uneasy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what's happening yeah. on that page, I suppose, as well. You know, I love it. Well, you... Just yeah. got that page and it was, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so far now, I, I have these pages on my background on the, on the computer, you know. Really? And, and a carousel to come around. And yeah, the, the contrast between the wonderful, beautiful, and Galway is a beautiful place, to a, yeah. the criminals and the other things that are happening. You know, um, the two beautiful, two natural colours to suddenly, ooh, something's going on here. You know, mm. great division. I love it, you know. Well, that was the thing that um, I went too far on because uh, in other podcasts, we, we've talked about how quite a lot of times... Um, you know, your stories are about one thing, but there's something going on underneath. And what I, first of all, thought that this was like a, it, because it's called Wolf and because it features, are we okay to say with it? As well, yeah. yeah. If it, you know, it's a werewolf story. 
the werewolves in it. And so that immediately said to me, fairy tale, that kind of, you know, um, Red Riding Hood and, you know, and all of that, that them three little pigs, not in a, in a, how that could be twisted. Those children's stories with a slight tilt of the head could be something really sinister. And that's what I thought. There's something sinister going on here. This is a story it features wolves. There's this beautiful landscape, beautiful part of the, the country, but there's something really sinister going on and undertones. And so I think what I was thinking was there would be a contrast. You'd see, oh, there's a lovely watercolor thing. Then suddenly, wall up, there'd be an explosion of violence and everything. But um, I'm having so much fun. I don't know. I, I, it sounds like it's coming across and it makes me really happy. But um, yeah, I'm just having fun. It's great. Really, really great. So, so, so much so, I just want to get on to the next page, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so far, it's the highlight of my day, you know? Okay. Page comes in. I'm, I'm looking at tiny little things and I'm going, oh, you know? When you look yeah. at the full page, you go, wow, you know? Um, it's a great feeling. Like, it's, yeah. Um, the all of our stories are about something else you know yes like this was a much bigger thing it was like 120 pages and we can only use use part of it so i always have an a story and a b story the b story was about absentee fathers and um, through all walks like whether you're criminals whether you're police whether you're god knows what if you're not present for your children they're just extensions of you and you use them the way you need you know like in criminal activities or in business children are just kind of co-workers you know you know it's expected of you to do this you know and the policeman he's expected to do look after his sister you know mm -hmm. and the father's gone and the whole absentee father storyline had to go and mm -hmm. we took characters out um but the, the a to step with the a story which is it's always a very personal thing for me, you know yourself. It's, it's always something yeah. about me. You know, relationship that you think is one one way, and then you find out it isn't. That in a split second it goes from being happy families to something else, and it's yeah. gone. That relationship you had is gone. You can't get it back. Your world is now turned on its axis, and here's your new reality. Yeah, that's what the story is about. Um, but the guy. He only sees his duty. The policeman sees duty ahead of him as this long road, you know. And the only respite was the local pub, which is now being tarnished because the owner's being gutted by a werewolf. You know? um, this werewolf is acting out and doing what she does. Her nature is to, to get revenge, you know. Um, he's still trying to hold on to the relationship that they had. But he's also having a relationship a different carnal relationship with another girl but then another third girl arrives from outside his environment and throws everything up in the air and that's what it, it is all about the relationship is one thing something goes wrong and you're left you're left wondering what the hell did i do you know and then you just have to live with it this is the new reality here's how we are and that's what the story is about and it's said in a beautiful place in Galway, uh, where everything should be, you know, lovely flowers, cut the turf, you know. But it's also a place where you have grow houses for drug dealers, and you have the local MC are actually facilitating a foreign family to come to Ireland and to traffic people. You know, there's a lot of horrible things are happening, but we don't really see an awful lot of that. It's talked about. So the, the, the story is very, very simple in a way, you know, but being me, I have to make it complicated. And I guarantee you, the last few pages of this book, people are going to go, you know, and I guarantee it. You know, because <laughs> seeing how it works in their books, when there's a twist at the end or something changed at the end, people come to the table and they go, is that coming? Where did that come from? You know? So looking forward to this one so much. And the yeah. pays look fantastic, you know, and it's just there's an energy to the whole thing that we 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 sort of when you're making something black and white, it's it's a lovely aesthetic. Mm. But it becomes 
another black and white page, another black mm. and white page. You know, and that sounds yeah. terrible because I love black and white. I really yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> but the this is so different, you know. Um, and this whole mood that we have on certain locations, certain scenes, that's fabulous. You know? Yeah. 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 And I get very, you know, emotional about stuff I do, you know. And I love this one so much already. And it's not even printed, you know. It's still in the early stages. <laughs> I love this. You know? I, I, I love City of Clowns, you know. Yeah. And there are things that I, I you know, we could, could have done, but we pushed the envelope with City of Clowns a bit more, been more crazy. And this one, I love it already. I love City of Clowns when it's finished, and I look back at it. But this one, we're only on page nine. And I love it, mm. you know. You really put yeah. this on the table and saying, there you go, read this. Is, yeah. Yes. It comes, it comes across in the um, in script. And, and I've said this before, it makes life so easy for me, apart from the hiccup at the beginning. Um, but it just makes, it's just there on the page. And you, the way you, their scripts come through, they're really, they're really evocative. So it's easy for me to go, yeah, I know where we are. Okay. And so everything on the pages comes from the scripts. And isn't it just the most, the brother and sister, Hansel and Gretel, yeah. the big bad wolf, you know? There you go. Are, no, I've actually put three different fairy stories in this. Right? Yeah. And it just comes across. It's just <laughs> right there. And I thought, I know what he's at. I can see yeah. that. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, so it's easy for me. I, I kind of feel like, oh, well, put, you know, and then you just sit down and do the work, just sit down and do the work. There was a thing that I used to, um, we're going to have PJ Holden on the podcast. Oh. He's up for it whenever. So oh. whenever we can yeah. get it together, whenever a slot, he's up for it. One of the things I, I always say to him <clears> um, <throat> is uh, I see his pencil sketches before the ink, everything. And there's all this energy dissipated he loses a lot of energy on the thing and i think i do too you know it's just from your initial pencil scratches um color is a real way to get that energy back because it can fizz and pop and everything black lines lock it down you know uh and i i've seen it and it, it nearly wouldn't say to tears but you know i've seen him sketch something it's got this energy and then you go over and he'll ink it and then he'll rub away all that energy still and if you didn't know you'd say it's a terrific drawing you know it's awesome and all of that but then i can just see that energy being erased away it's a very weird thing it's really really odd but but color um color just gives you the opportunity to to put it back in i think you know warm warm things up or cool them down or you know blood and splatters and all this stuff um yeah it's just terrific I'm really i'm just on the ball yeah yeah it's just trying to keep me from it really is you know you just get tired and you go right okay i've got to call the day i've got to call the day but i know i've got the rest this next batch mapped out so i just steamroll in you know it's great great fun I noticed the composition of these ones. We're getting more of the people in it because we need yeah. to see the people in the situation. Um, our other stuff, like Witch, is a fantasy series. So yeah. it, it works really well for close up faces and things, and you know, and the terror you see in people's faces and stuff is great. SSDD is a world we all think we recognize because it's a police thing. So the figures are different. If you look at um, Nazis Inc. There's more bodies in that. You see all the sand mm. and all of the things. And in this one, it's, it's similar. We're seeing more of the people. So we've seen the people in the situation. We're not looking over the shoulder as much as we used to on things. I don't know where Now we're seeing them do something like you see in the cinema, the movie. Yeah. That's obviously buying into the color and everything else and the composition is changing. You know? Yeah. Because whether you show mid shot of someone or the whole body or just a face or even an eyeball, and it does something to people who are experiencing it when they're reading it, you know, mm. 
brings them closer to the, the action or closer to something or pulls away. You know? Yeah. In this one, we do need to see the, the people, the full size people, because we're looking at their world, you know, that we're feeling those sensations through the color, through the full size of them. We're not yeah. focused in on something they're doing. There are not many little insert shots of hands and things doing things in this mm. one. Mm. But, um, and there's no reason for that, you know, um, where we're trying different different things on this one. There's quite a lot of different things, even in the script, we're trying a lot of different things out. Um, yeah. And it, it's, again, it's, it's to get that energy level up and to have someone reading it and want them to turn the page, you know, and this, to, to feel the sensations that the characters are feeling. It's hard to feel yeah. too much sensation with nuance in black and white. Mm. It's a stark thing, you know. Yeah, very stark. In the city, and it's just, ah, oh, there it is. Look at that, wow. This is, does it warm me up? Does it cool me down? Does it get me excited? You know, and we need to feel those sensations. And we, we can, there is a page you did where we, we find out that this hasn't just happened overnight with the brother and his one sister. He's been looking after her for a long time. They've been abandoned. And uh, we, we move in on basically her eye where she's turned. And that eyeball, you know, in the dark is freaky as shit. You know, it's just, you know, it's whoa. Because as you look down the page, we're getting closer and closer and closer, you know, and he's obviously backing away. So there's that mm -hmm. one jaws where the camera pulls back and Chief Brody goes like this, you know? Yes, you know? yes, yes. And then it goes weird focus. That sort of thing happens on that page. I play to you. You're very good now. I love it. I love it. I, I'm a big fan yeah. of um, horror films, but not gore and slasher films, not modern things. Yeah. The Hammer films, the old style of things. And one of the things is about it, uh, one of the great things about the, yeah. those movies is the use of colour and particularly blood. And you think everybody thinks of, you know, that eyeball shot, uh, Christopher Lee is Frankenstein's monster get shot in the eye and that oh, yeah. blood coming down or drunk. slapped himself yeah <laughs> <laughs> he and he said you know getting set up for this thing you know and putting stuff in his hand and hitting himself properly with it he really went for it you know really so, yeah in the cellar kind of thing you know it's, yeah yeah and that's that yeah and we're in that realm of horror wolves yes. blood things and it came down i was trying to think of the wolf eye that i didn't copy but was in my mind. Oh, it's the it was the eye of um uh what do you call him? Uh Sarah? what do you call that? No, the the actor uh from Gladiator um also Crow? No, the older guy who played the older character, the older the trainer of the or the owner of the slaves. Slave owner. Oh, yes. Um, Oliver Reed. Oliver Reed. Yeah. Oliver Reed. Mm -hmm. Oliver Reed. Yeah. I remember watching him as a war in a werewolf That's movie right, when right. I was a kid. It was about yeah. eight or nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. it scared the, the Jesus out of me. And it was the eyes. So whenever I was doing that eye, um, that's what I had in my brain. It all goes in. It all goes in. Your, you yeah. know, we were talking about that oh. before. It all goes in. Um, if let me ask you a question if you could go back and color one of the other books two pugs books <laughs> which one would it be that's a toughie you know it's a tough mm. one um, the one when I, I i didn't have to think of it. one came to my brain straight away and then i, I went yeah and I would, then i thought about it but one came you, you think it would be um city of clowns but well, i'd say talking gun you know Talking gun. Yeah. That's the old West I think deserves to be seen in those colours, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Especially whenever you think of what do you think of in like those John Ford movies, those westerns, that colour, that sandy, those rich earth colours. And in the middle of that there's this vampire, this black and or you know, this dark and grey. So you had that I mean it would just be a focus on they would just have these Awesome, bright, sandy colors, and then this coach of darkness, this kind of vampiric, 
pale skin. It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Uh, but it was the first thing that popped in my mind. Yeah. Well, we'll see how this thing goes first because we have other projects, you know, there's stuff on the slate, you know. And, you know we do you have to finish off SSDD? Got to finish SSDD, got to finish this. Yeah, uh, yeah you, listen. Oh, there's one thing <clears throat> you'd asked me, I meant to mention to you. Um, in one of the scenes, there's a biker gang, and just for a goof, he had one of these coats on, and yeah. I drew a patch on it. Yeah. And I drew, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I drew uh, the dirty dogs. Yeah. Um, it was actually, you had asked me if it was me and Paul. No, it was me and you, the two pugs. <laughs> I was going to do two of them, the two dogs, oh, right, the yeah. two, two dirty dogs, but I just made them dirty dogs. So the dirty dogs are the two pugs. I always try to do that somewhere. Like, I was thinking, who could we have? There's always a cameo of somebody. Well, we have Bo and Sam. Who will we have? Harold. Who will we have? You know, the opportunity will come at some stage, but we'll just keep watching the backgrounds and, and we'll see who pops up. Over the line sometimes. Some things mm. I do, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I get to, I called on it like you know, but by the, the I think I did um, seven. I think it was seven scripts before I did before I finished um, the sideways nuns. So what we ended up with um, was the seven script, the seven great script. Um, it was it was a monster of a book. There was all kinds of stuff going on there. Take her it and still 122 pages. I think it is. Yeah. Wow, it's, why isn't that big? It was, you know, and we never got to finish. Like, you know. yeah. um, ah, we have things coming up, you know. Um, yeah. I have one about time traveling priests that would look great in color, you know. <laughs> you have this, I, I don't know. Um... Well, I've always I've said this as well. You know, I'm a fan. Apart from you know, drawing the books, I'm a fan of yours and of Two Pugs. And um, but you have these stable now of characters, and I keep saying there's these side characters, and I go, right, you know, this character needs its own book. I can't remember the, the last part. I probably said every book I do. I say there's some character or others. I give this character their own book. Um, I can't remember who it was and. SSDD or I can't remember anyway um, another character going yeah what about this guy this guy but you have this knack of coming up really <laughs> great characters like you know well, we, we said it before if a major publisher was backing us uh, mm. we could bring out one of these every month you know mm. some of these worlds are so rich you know that you could tell umpteen types of stories and you know uh, yeah but we're only two people and you carry the, the can for a lot of this, you know, it you can only go so fast. And um now the con the conventions are back, you know. Yeah. We have lots of things on the plan slate though, you know, to do. Yeah. Well think about where in the even the past four years, you know, going from kind of nothing to or one or two, you know, bubbling along and then, you know, so I I definitely think I've taken off. In the past, and I, I've done a lot in the past seven, eight years, you know, uh, small press and different things, but I had a big mountain to climb, you know. And the, the frustrating thing is, I just want to keep on going, you know, I just want to get on, but you know, I have that kind of desire just to keep going. So, yeah, yeah and I think that's the best way. We just keep you going. have certain things that are your style, but you can see in, in the, the later books, um, from Nazis Inc. onwards, you can see how you've loosened up and you stretch yeah. a bit more. And everything yeah, we do, definitely. it has a different mark on it. It just looks yeah. good, you know? Yeah. I'd, I'd actually, I'd say, by the time you finish the, the nuns, I'd say the end of it's going to look different to the beginning because we, we started so long ago. But that's yeah. not a bad thing. That, that happens in all like big tomes, you know? Oh, yeah. The yeah. collected editions, the character at the start doesn't look the same at the end. You know? Yeah. That, that'll be interesting. You should see, uh, well, I'm sure you have seen, but loads of people, if you check out very early Hellboy yeah, and yeah. later Hellboy, like, I mean, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's, the difference is huge. It's huge. And you, you, that's what you want. I mean, if you were still banging out the same stories, yeah. 
after a month you've read it and go, okay, it's sort of similar. But you again, you're doing that as well. You're like you've got these tentacles and you're going, you know, straight detective and zombies and or not so um, werewolves and vampires and you know and cowboys and you know. Hang on. And why would you want to do the same story? Why would you? Yeah. Um, if you have a character you love, it's great just writing new situations yeah. for them. You know, but um, certain stories like this, this one I want to talk about relationships you know, mm. and uh, do it in a horror story setting. You know, yeah. In the west of Ireland, you know, and uh, like we said a bit um, with which which started off as a gangster story, you know. And became something else. And yeah. Certain things you can put in stories that work well, but don't work in a different setting. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. This one now is about crisis points and how things change. And yeah. that's a personal thing to me now. I wouldn't have written this story four years ago or even two years ago. You know. Right. But once I told this story, I won't tell it again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cruciamente, that, that, that point where everything just changes. Mm. I'll never tell that story again. There's no reason to. I've got it off my chest. It's catharsis. I'll never do it again. And, and these guys, it's a one off. Mm. So I was really, you think it? Something. There's always, I've got three stories in mind. This one, right. it's one off because it's about pain, it's about hurt. Mm. And it was. The first draft was very hard to write. It's a personal thing for me, and it was very hard to write the first draft. Once I got to draft four, and I talked to, to myself up here about how these things happen and how it works and what comes afterwards. And the very last panel in this book now is, um, is uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that failure. I always say that I'm looking forward to seeing the last page because I start with the last page on these things and I work backwards. Yeah, always. Yeah. Um, and I knew how this one ended, and I knew exactly this guy's face you know, would be distraught, and oh my god, you know, you know, it's it's like Planet of the Apes where Harry Heston goes, "You, God damn you to hell! You blew it all up," you know. <laughs> That's the feeling that we should have, you know, on the very last panel, um, that 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 was that was the point for me, um, and I wrote the whole story around all that. Uh, so that this is one I'll only do one of because uh, it's, I could, couldn't go back and do it again. Then no, it's it's a done. So for anybody watching this, you see what he does. You see how he does it. That's how he does it. That's how he gets you. That tease, that twinkle, that uh, was it lit, lint, lilt, lilt, uh, that Irish lyrical <laughs> right, draws yeah. you in this is how he does it i go i'm, I'm uh, right okay yeah 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 take my money <laughs> give me that when can I, you know that's how it happens that's how you, you uh, that's that ability you have to it is uh, lovely though and um, when we finally get to do a uh, con together you'll probably see it um, people come up and they say i read one of your books or two of your books and they're all different you know and when they, they see what have you got next and they're doing this with their hands, you know. Yeah. And that's such a lovely feeling to know that you must be yeah. nice something with a story. You know, they yeah. take it away and they can't wait to read it. That's a brilliant yeah. you know. Um, and you'll see eventually we'll do a, a con to get up front maybe or something. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I always feel I'm so hard on myself, really, really hard on myself. That I, I've kind of um stop myself from taking compliments people you know you get compliments and it's as you say it's really lovely to hear but i have this weird guilt about it it's very odd it's a really really odd thing because i always whenever i'm giving my kids um compliments i i always um tell them to uh like yeah I'm awesome. Yeah, you know, to, to really love it. Yeah, because I, I don't know where it came out. It's come out like you shouldn't be, like, don't blow your own trumpet and don't, you know, don't show off. That was always whenever I was a kid, don't, you know, you shouldn't. And so it's made me feel really guilty. But but I lo don't stop. If anybody wants to get send me uh, a put in the comments, like, uh, 
I'll take any compliment that's not going, but I'll pretend like I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Getting it. It's weird. It's really weird. It's really weird. You know yourself, we're, we're, we're doing something that, like uh, Matt Garvey says, if I can make comics, anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's how different those comics are for each each creative group. That's yes. really interesting. You know, it's, like what we do is we tell a story that has a bit of depth and has these crazy characters and they're quirky. Um, mm -hmm. Someone else can write a story about um, Star Wars. You know? mm. And there's so many people out there willing to hear both of those stories. Yeah. And like, we do quite well at, at, at conventions now. And yeah. the people come up and I'm so talkative about what's on the table. They get carried away and they buy something and they're happy with what they bought. You know? Yeah. I've talked to people who weren't that happy with what they bought at a convention or in a bookshop, you know. Um, and we've only ever had a couple of people say, I don't like this story, I don't like that, you know, and I've never had anybody say they don't like the art, you know, yeah. Well, right, right. and they go, oh, black and white, oh, look at that page, you know, um, yeah. we get that all the time. Yeah. You know what's weird about it? Like, I mean, the most that you might spend, you know, even if you spend like 20 quid, 25 quid, even 40 quid on a book, I don't know. Yeah, sometimes there's these omnibus I get for Christmas presents, something big, you know, an omnibus of, uh, I've got one in front of me, the Tomb of Dracula horror comic books. Um, it was an expensive present. It was like 50 quid or something. Somebody gave it to me for a present, you know. And if you didn't like it, you know, you were down 50 quid. And I was like, so, I mean, you might spend, you'd spend 50 quid in a meal art, yeah. right? And this is what people get, you go, this comic might cost three quid, whatever, five, even 10 or 12 quid or something. If you really don't like it, if you hate it, what have you lost? You've not really lost a huge amount. That's the most rewarding um, entertainment per, you know, per pound for, for your quid. You know, your euro in your pocket or whatever it's amazing it's just amazing that you can as you say you can go from i remember somebody saying to me like don't ever do a vampire story because everything's been done with vampires everything's been done and i was thinking really and uh, you know vampires on the moon vampire zombies vampires in space vampires whatever and you think yeah that's okay but if the point of your story is aha and they were all vampires <laughs> then you know that yeah. doesn't really work but if they if you just have a character who is a vampire and explore that character's story what happens to it it isn't the fact that they're a vampire isn't you know so what um it's the story built around and that's why whenever it came vampires in the wild west i was like you know my ears just perked up i was like yeah i'll do that what what, what is this about you know there's no bad stories, I, I think. Badly told, maybe. Badly written or badly illustrated or something like that. But, you know, it's a story, man. I, I just love it. I just think it's terrific. Well, we... Um, I know people say we aim to please. But to please. we're not here to piss anybody off. You know, that kind of way. No, but no. We, we want everyone to be happy. But we also want them to go, hmm, and think of it that way. You know? Yeah. And yeah, and if people get that this book is about certain things, like Wolf is about a very simple thing, a moment in time. Mm -hmm. Our other books could be about three or four different things, you know. And like we like them bones is about a lot of different stuff that's gone on in my head. You know? Yeah. Talking gun is about a lot of different things, you know. Um this one's a more straightforward thing. And hopefully People won't have to delve too hard into it to realize that it's about this relationship. Yeah. yeah. Should we say, or sorry, to oh, sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, um, should we say, are you happy? I talk about that. This is a this is definitely an adult book. Oh, this one definitely. Yeah, we'll put a disclaimer on the book when it's printed. Um, yeah, yeah, it's adults only. Um, it's adults only. Yeah, um, the. The story works in three ways, and one of them is the carnal aspect of some relationships. One is the dependency aspect of some relationships. 
and one is the this relationship is doomed from the start. These people are inimical. They shouldn't be together. But they stick together, you know. So to show the carnal aspect, um, there is some mature teams and panels in it, and to show the the werewolf acting out, we have to show that violence. It's more than we've ever seen yeah. before. And yeah, it's definitely not for kids now. Not definitely not. No, it's not for kids. But it had um, an not when it was printed. Print yeah. yeah such a good but i'm just i kind of tell you just excited i'm working on it. it's just terrific really really terrific and it's i've never done an adult i'm not like most people we're not british and you can see more um on facebook these days and twitter you know sauciness and rudeness and everything um but i just haven't ever drawn you know that that gore that level of gore or or uh, bedroom scenes before so it was new as well you know it's it's um you don't really think about it it's weird because you get these superheroes running around in their spandex yeah. and they're you know every muscle and bump and groove is there for all to see yeah. but they're covered up and i think when i came to draw that scene in particular there's a bedroom scene between two characters and they're making love and everything and i deliberately and i didn't know i just left it it's very subtle yeah. but i deliberately didn't do you know the hollywood body or yes the yeah. over over sexualized yeah. try to make it as real not realistic but you know as naturally proportioned as yeah. possible not to hi highlight that um kind of thing so that was that was a real treat a real treat to kind of think about that and go i'm not doing the the hollywood thing yeah. you know well, we, we said before, um, sometimes stuff is just thrown in to be salacious. You know, on the first page, um, there's a scene with some nudity or something, and it's just to get people to go, is there any more to turn pages? Yes. Um, yeah. But other books are about sensuality. You know, they're, yeah. they're a depiction of, of sex and sexuality. That's great. Now, we're not hardcore in any way, you know. Like no, no. There's no, nothing no. very untoward in this book. But it is a mature scene and it has yeah. to be in to show you that this is the relationship they have. Their relationship does not exist outside of that bedroom, really. Yeah. You know? Um like when they for we first meet the two of them, um she tells them something's happened down the road and he's gone. Leaves her in the dust, literally in the dust, waving dust out of her face. You know. And um, it's lit this this relationship he has there is just a carnal release. Because he's putting everything he has into his defense, looking after his sister, who is this werewolf. Well, we can say she's a werewolf because you find out the first page. You know. Yeah, find it. Yeah. Right. So he's protecting that horror. He's spending all that time on that, and he has nothing left. And the release he finds is someone who's in the same job as him, who understands everything. That's only a fling, blah blah blah, and they're there for a good time, not a long time. You know. Yeah. Um, so that, that that scene has to be there. That's not on every page, you know. Yeah. Well, there is a scene later on where they're both in the same room, but it's not a sexual thing anymore. Mm -hmm. you no. Know, if you if you read the script, that they are in this very similar position later on, but it's not about sex anymore. You know? And uh, it's actually kind of a funny scene. When I was writing, I was laughing. Then I started taking jokes out, you know. Um. But yeah. Um. It, there's a reason why, why yeah, for everything in our books, you know, there's a reason yeah. why we go so far and no further. And this one, we go a little bit further because that's what the story says. I mean, you can, you can sit down and you can write all sorts of stuff and have orgies and God knows what running around the place. Yeah, fine. There's someone going to buy that. And why not? Yeah. It's not a story, though, you know. No. The, the violence in this is a reason for it. And the level of violence is a reason for that. And the, the relationship and the fact that these are not two supermodels, these people. Mm. They won't be on Love Island. No, these are real yeah. people who connect and connect in this way and only this way. Yeah. So there's, 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 it, everything, I always say it, everything is deliberate. 99% of what we do is deliberate. Sometimes we have an accident and something works. Uh, yeah, you might, you might throw something in, but again, if you throw something in, no what's going to happen. You know, there's a yes. reason why you threw it in. Yeah. So, 
there's everything in this it's as deliberate as everything else we've done and and you know i i think it, it makes the story you know it's not there just to titillate anybody it, no, it tells no. you who this person is and the yeah. story for it you know it's just all in service of the story really yes everything everything we've ever done it's about the story if the story yeah. wants something to be a certain way we have to write it that way we have to draw it that way and present it to the reader because we're given the reader the story you know? yeah um, and yeah, that, that's that's why we're here you know yeah to, to, to get this off my chest out of my head you know just to yeah. serve your addiction to draw you know <laughs> yes and right. at the end someone walks away from the table looking at the back of the book going oh can't wait to read this you know and again we get lots of nice messages from people you know we get emails from people saying you know i read this what do you mean by that when's the next one blah blah, blah. and uh most like, almost all of it's complimentary you know a couple of times you have people saying oh well i, I thought it was this and i wanted that to happen and, yeah, yeah yeah no you know <laughs> a story can go 10 different ways at any point yeah. but if you know where the end is you know and i know where the end is the story goes that way you know it might twist yeah. it a bit but it's gonna go that way not the way you expect sometimes you know that's why it's very well, that's dangerous a, I mean... the last page of our books because the last page gives away an awful lot sometimes I, I yeah I, I i shouldn't um i shouldn't do that I've, I've done that a couple of times and i've always regretted always regretted it going to the end and seeing the last it's always a kind of and even seeing a, a book that doesn't delight you that takes you in a place you didn't i thought oh, that's always much more worth it you know because you'd never forget those books you never even if you're left with a kind of sense of um like I remember reading Catcher in the Rye and getting to the last page and being furious, really, really furious. But I've never forgotten the book, you know, yeah. never forgotten but the book. It's, it's wonderful. Um, Ray, I'm getting a couple of notifications just about my things about to to die. Sure, yeah. So, um, well, so, we, we discussed colour and we're, we talk about yes. Wolf again when it's near ready. We shouldn't be too long. And we definitely have this one out before Christmas. And... Um, I cannot wait. It'll make the perfect Christmas present for me. You know? Um, I am, I've been Ray Roach. This man's been Jim Lavery. With all our content information in the thing below. And uh, get, get in touch with us. Ask any questions you want. And um, yeah. ask the questions about colour. You know? Yes. That should yeah. be good. Jim, it's always, always a pleasure. You know, this has been terrific, really yeah. terrific. Where I've really enjoyed this. this is Can't wait for this one now. Really excited yeah. for this one. Yeah. Page nine, and I already love it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge pleasure um, uh, for me. I just, I mean, I know what I'm doing tomorrow morning, page 10, and I'm just, in fact, I might do it tonight. But anyway, uh, I'll see. Ah, I tell you, it's always a pleasure, Jim. You're one of a kind. I'll talk to you again, man. Okay. Thanks, Roy. Bye bye. See you later. Bye, everyone.